guys, it's Katie. I'm filming my current or September favorites. I don't know. Sometimes I call them the name of the month. Sometimes I call them current. Forgive the inconsistency. It's just real life. Whatever. We're just going to get to it. I don't have that many actually. Don't have very many physical products. A lot of them are like media and otherwise. Also, I'm trying a new camera angle right now. It could be great. It could be hideous. I don't know. I won't really know until I watch back the footage. So fingers crossed. Talking about some products. The first thing is this. It is a whoops is this. <laughs> it is a conditioner. It's the L'Oreal Extraordinary Oil Nourishing Conditioner. This is something that I had seen in stores. I think the oil line is semi-new and I'd seen it in stores, seen the ads, and it kind of intrigued me. But I didn't really have a reason to buy, or I don't know, I guess I hadn't really bought new shampoo and conditioner in a while. And then what happens with me, because I have like nine gallons of hair, I don't know if you could tell, is I go through conditioner a lot faster than I go through shampoo. And it frustrates me because if I buy a mask set I finish the conditioner still have the shampoo and then have to like go to my next matching sets conditioner do you know what I mean so they're like always off and that like super annoys me so sometimes I will just buy a random conditioner as like a backup like a fill-in conditioner until I move on to my next like matching set of shampoo and conditioner I don't know I'm sure everybody does things a little differently but that's how I roll so I picked this up as like a, okay I'm gonna use this when I run out of my condish and I love it. First of all, smells great, duh. That's pretty much what revolves my whole life is if a product smells good or not. But beyond that, the moment I used this, it glided through my hair. A big reason I use conditioner is to help get the tangles out of my, my hair and to get things just smooth and situated. And it definitely did that. And then the next day, it was silky, silky, silky smooth. And ever since I've been using it, still silky 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 smooth i have naturally straight hair but with that being said the older i've gotten hair changes and so i've started to get a little bit more natural kind of texture and wave right now i've literally done nothing to it but i can tell it's shinier it's a little bit smoother a little bit softer and i definitely think this is why recommend it it's cheap it's drugstore i want to try the shampoo now too Moving on to my favorite lip balm. This is something that is actually Travis's. I bought this for him and I haven't stolen it from him per se, but I definitely like to, you know, reap the benefits as well and borrow it. This is from Jack Black. It's just the stick natural lip balm in the scent Fresh Mint. Jack Black is like a men's skincare line. I'm pretty sure their lip balm is one of their famous products or their popular products, but most of their lip balms are the kinds in a tube that has almost like a Vaseline-y feel and I remember I did not get that for Travis because I figured it would leave a little bit of like a, a shine like a gloss and I'm like oh he's gonna want no part of that and they only had this one stick one in the whole range and so I'm like okay let me try that it is amazing I'm the type of person where I have a lip balm next to my bedside table on my desk in every purse like I am OCD and I need to have my lips with like chopstick or lip balm on at like all times and this is probably the best one I've ever used. I have some other ones in tubes or in different forms that are pretty good, but this not only smells really minty and fresh, it's so smooth, it's like butter, it melts into your lips and then it really just like last. So it doesn't just sit on top, whereas some lip balms I find just sit on top. This sinks in, yet it still remains on at the same time, if that makes sense. So. I don't know. I don't know how it does that, but it does. It's not too thick. It's not too anything, really. It's perfect. I really love it. I think this is the only scent they make of it, which is good because I like mint, but I'm the type of girl who, when I find something I like, I want to try more, different flavors, different scents, all that. So I highly recommend this Jack Black lip balm. My scent of the month, which I'm also wearing today, is this. It's from Diptyque. It's called Eau Du Well. I just uploaded my perfume collection, actually, and I talked about this. Check that out. I'll link it below and in the cards. It's a long one, people, but I have a lot of perfume and I have a lot to say about perfume. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it is an Eau Du Parfum. It's a really nice quality fragrance and it smells like fall and winter in a bottle its main note that you can smell is bourbon vanilla it's like so rich and warm and cozy but it's sweet it's sophisticated it's glorious get your hands on it 
And then next I have a candle favorite. It's actually burning right here, but because I'm a psycho and loved it, I bought a backup. So I have one to talk about. This is from Bath and Body Works. It's a three wick candle. I'm pretty sure this is a brand new scent this year. I'd never seen it before and I'm pretty familiar with their scents. It's called Spice It Up. And the description is, it's, okay, hold on. It's called Spice It Up Cinnamon Pretzel Twist. And I saw that and I was like, okay, like interesting. And I smelled it and I was like, give me every single one that you have in stock, which literally they only had two left in stock at the time. So I can tell it's a popular one and hopefully it comes back next year. The notes are fresh ground cinnamon, soft homemade pretzel and vanilla cream icing. Last year, my candle obsession from Bath and Body Works was warm apple pie and it is still one of my all time favorites. The reason I liked that one so much is because it legitimately smelled like a warm apple pie. You could smell the flaky crust, you could smell the rich warm cinnamon, you could trick somebody into thinking that you were baking. When I smelled this, I got that same exact vibe. You literally smell like the pretzel, like the dough. You smell the cinnamon, you smell like the cream. I mean, I picture um, Auntie Anne's or whatever the different pretzel places, I picture like a warm cinnamon pretzel dipped into that creamy icing, like you, it smells so authentic lights up the whole room it's very potent it's very sweet so if you don't like sweet be wary but I really love it check it out that concludes my product favorites of the month I haven't really gotten a whole lot of new stuff lately we'll see though I'm sure that'll change so now I'm gonna talk about some different media favorites I have three movies to talk about actually and it's mostly one and then the other two were kind of like backups but okay so the first one is it the Stephen King remake of the movie it me, Travis, his brother, and then his sister-in-law, we went to go see it a few weekends ago, and I loved it. I have seen the original It, I'm pretty sure, but it was a really long time ago, and Stephen King movies are very long, and I don't fully remember everything, but it's the scary clown movie. It has one of the kids from the show Stranger Things in it. It's set in 1989, which is the year I was born. Hey, hey. And I am the type of person who likes scary movies. It has to have a good plot line, though. I don't like just, like, stupid horror movies, but if there's a good, good storyline and a good plot line, I'm super into it, especially for this time of year. So we went to see it. I was actually the brave one in the group, which is surprising because I'm not brave with many things, but apparently when it comes to scary movies, I was the brave one. And it was done so well. It The whole movie had like a Stranger Things vibe to it. So if you've watched that show, I'm sure you would like it. The reason I say that is because it had kind of a retro soundtrack. It's set in like a retro time frame. The group of kids that's in it, they're really funny and like likable. And we were laughing a lot throughout the whole thing. And I would say that it's more of a creepy movie than a scary movie. And I heard a lot of people say that. I think they did it really well and they left it off to where there's going to be a part two, which I think is also how the original was. So I'm super into it. I'm super on board. It makes me really excited for Halloween and fall and just the whole nine yards. That's actually another one of my favorites, but I'm going to put that to the side for right now. Okay, the other two movies I wanted to mention were two that I just saw on an airplane. So one I watched on the way there and one I watched on the way back. So I just wanted to give them a little mention because they were really good. Hidden Figures was the first one. That movie was very talked about last year during Oscar season and with reason. I wanted to see it at the time, but I just didn't. It's the one based after like the three noteworthy women who worked for NASA. Uh, I think it was in the 60s and they were African-American women and it just goes to show like their storyline and like all their highs and lows that they had during their time with NASA and all the amazing achievements that they had. I believe it was Octavia Spencer, right, was one of the main actresses in it and I forget the other two's names but I'm sure you've heard of the movie Hidden Figures. It was really good. It left me like choking up all throughout the the flight but I think I'm just like kind of a sensitive baby. It's not really a sad movie. It's more of just like a touching movie but it was really good so I get what people were talking about you should watch it and then on the way back I watched The Intern with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway okay so this movie it's a little silly like the I don't know what Rotten Tomatoes had to say about it but I'm sure they gave it not the best score because they tend to be pretty harsh but I just wanted to talk about it because I really did like it overall there were some kind of weird parts some weird like plot line things where you're like eh but there were a lot of fun actors in it um the guy from oh what is he from what is he from what is he from is he from new girl 
there's some actor in it. I it's escaping me so much right now. But then there's the other guy from Pitch Perfect is in it. Sorry that I'm not saying their names. So there were some fun actors. And then I love Anne Hathaway. I really, really like her. I love Robert De Niro. How can you not? It was set in New York, which is my favorite place. It was just a good movie. It was just like a feel good, funny, relatable at parts, like insightful. I don't know. I mean, it was definitely a good plane movie. It was two hours long, so it was kind of long, but the flight was four hours. So, you know, it again, a great plane movie. So I just wanted to give it a shout out. The Intern. And then my show favorite of the month has been Ozark. It was a Netflix original series with Jason Bateman. It was only 10 episodes long. Me and Travis actually finished it last night, but we've been watching it throughout this whole month. It's hard to explain, I guess, but it's another one of those stories of like a drug. I, I don't even know if I know how to explain this. Like, I don't think I even know the terminology, like a drug cartel guy and then a guy who's working for him and laundering money. And if you've ever seen like Breaking Bad or Narcos or any of the ones that are remotely related to that, you know that money laundering and drug cartel Obviously, there's bound to be lots of drama and lots of scary things and lots of dark, crazy things that happen, and this was no exception. I really, really love Jason Bateman, and the other actors in it were really good and, like, really cool characters. It's set in Ozark, Missouri, which is, like, a little lake town, and I don't know. It's definitely worth a watch. It's a little bit ominous, which I think is good for this time of year, so you should check it out. I'm going to mention two quick songs, and then I have one final favorite, and then I will let you carry on with your day. The first one is by the good old-fashioned Allie and AJ. Do you guys remember them? Potential breakup song? Chemicals react? I don't know. I really loved Allie and AJ back in the day and they're back with a song called Take Me and I love it. It has a major like 80s retro pop vibe. I don't wait long, I got song. It's very poppy and fun and I think you like it if you like that kind of music. And then this one literally doesn't even need an explanation so I'm not gonna give one. Taylor. Okay, my final favorite is kind of a silly one, but it's just the fact that it's fall. Oh my gosh. I grew up in Phoenix, Arizona. I spent the last six years of my life in Orange County, California. Guess what? I've never experienced fall until now. Portland, Oregon coming through with the fall weather. So I've heard people talk about it before and it's a real thing. Like all of a sudden one day it'll go from being 80s and 90s to like Hello, it's 50 degrees outside and it's cool and crisp and the leaves change and I'm in awe. Like I'm in utter awe of the fall weather. With that said, we're having a brief little stint of like a mini heat wave. I think that's semi-normal and probably like, I'm not even gonna go into the politics of things, but you know, other reasons behind that. But just in general, fall, I'm, I'm just so excited. I'm still very nervous for winter. I'm very nervous for all the rain that people talk about. We will see how I hold up. Allegedly, it's gonna be a bad one. Allegedly, there's gonna be a lot of snow. I don't know the first thing about snow. We will see how I hold up. But for now, I am super happy and super loving fall. So I just wanted to share that with you. Where do you guys live? Probably a lot of you live in California, Arizona, I don't know. But where do you live? What's the weather like there? Leave it in the comments below. I would love it if you guys would subscribe. That would mean the world to me. Thanks for stopping by today. Uh, I don't have anything else to say, but I will see you in my next video. Love you. Mm -mm.